Hello, my name is Bob Jansen, and I am an ex-professor who likes to pull beautiful monsters called strange attractors out of chaos. What is an attractor? You're looking at one now. Strange attractors come from chaos mathematics and are entities that exist somewhere between chaos and order. You can think of them as abstract art if you want, for with some effort they can be that too. Strange attractor abstracts are diaphanous, graceful, and complicated, colorful and complex sweet spots in the Hilbert space of all possible shapes, which we can, if we're patient, get to uncloak before our very eyes like a Klingon warbird on the main view screen of the Enterprise. Chaotic strange attractors are not really drawn. They're actually grown at millions of calculations per second in a computer. The many variables I manipulate are a lot like DNA. Each image has a unique set that is used to clone or render a new attractor image. Rendering a high resolution attractor can often reach 100 trillion calculations and usually takes many CPU hours even on a fast serial computer. Strange attractors result from populating an environment, in this case a 2D image plane, with as many as 100 individually weighted and interacting nonlinear functions with weird names like swirls, cylinder, fisheye, popcorn, and so forth. Uncloaking the strange attractor, a multivariate sweet spot in this buzzing and booming confusion, is achieved by repeatedly randomly sampling from the pixelated image plane and doing a tricky bit of converging of nearby pixels. Apparently this process resembles how shapes in nature are formed because attractors often look organic like bizarre new animals or body parts. Graphic art hasn't changed much in 25,000 years. Since the cave paintings at Lascaux, it has consisted of applying colored pigments onto a surface using our mouth, hands, hair, or sticks uh, to draw patterns or objects. But growing abstract art by randomly pinging a distorted image plane a few trillion times is really something new. It's the marriage of artificial intelligence to human intelligence, to the point where no one knows what part of the final artwork was created by the AI and what part by the meat brain. We are partnered in smashing nonlinear functions together like colliding galaxies, randomly sampling from the debris for days, then blowing whole rainbows into the image plane like mist into a spider web. Strange attractors look like nothing specific we have ever seen in the real world, yet somehow they remind us of everything we have ever seen. I suspect that attractor art directly stimulates the neural elements we use to construct our perceptions of reality what we psychologists used to call feature detectors. One backer from the wormhole project wrote that her little girl now stands in front of her very own wormhole and dreams she's traveling uh, through space-time to all sorts of strange places. Fractals have been around for years but have usually been displayed on small computer screens or printed on uh, eight and a half by 11 inch pages. But anyone who has ever been to a modern art museum knows that size matters in paintings, especially in abstracts. Very large paintings can take your breath away, literally knock your socks off. Imagine if Jackson Pollock had painted only eight and a half by 11 inch miniatures. When I got a large computer monitor, I realized that attractors can also knock your socks off when they're displayed even a little larger. And there are now commercial computer printers that can print 64 inches wide by any length. So I decided then and there to print my attractors in huge sizes, sizes so large that they look like wormholes on a wall. It's been said that works of art are never really finished, only at some point abandoned. And this is particularly true of rendering strange attractors.
I work very hard to keep my flame fractals from looking like a computer made them. In fact, a computer doesn't make the aesthetic judgments, a uh, meat brain does, yours truly, the final and ultimate tangle of nonlinear functions.